Hi guys, Ren here and welcome to this new video series that I decided to do. Uh, in this series I'm going to explain a couple of principles in simple physical terms to help you understand the mechanics and physics behind cycling because there seem to be a lot of confusion about these things. So the first uh, metric I'm going to address is power because that's talked a lot about uh, in the recent years and many, many people don't really uh, understand what it is or how it works. So many people uh, say that power basically is how strong as a rider you are. Mm, that's uh, more or less true but it's not that simple. So in classical mechanics power is defined as the rate of change of energy so yeah this is the, the rate of change of energy however in cycling what we talk about uh, is mechanical energy and mechanical energy in this case is represented by work now work is a physical property and it's force applied over distance so this is a form of mechanical energy that we're expanding as a cyclist so uh, to simplify we assume that the power is constant in this example so we can say that power will be our work divided by time so this is the unit of power actually because this one is measured in joules and time of course is, is measured in seconds. So what we have here uh, is one watt second or sorry one joule second that is one watt. Uh, to make more sense of it this doesn't really relate to cycling in any obvious uh, manner. So we're going to go a bit further than that. And we do that by adding this piece to the formula. So now we get forms or force times distance over time. Now this uh, might seem a bit familiar because distance over time, this is velocity. So what we end up with is that power equates a force times a velocity and this is very important because uh, in this case the force represents all the resistance forces that you have to overcome in this situation where the power is constant that means that your driving force at the rear wheel of the bike is overcoming all the opposing forces or the drag forces to create an equilibrium so you're uh, traveling at a constant speed or constant velocity. So to sum it up, I'll write it again in a simplified version, forms times velocity. So what do we get out of here and why do we want to measure power in the first place? So when we're bike racing or basically any, any other type of racing, we want to increase our velocity as much as possible. In order to do that, we can increase the power or decrease, or should I say, increase the power, increase the velocity or decrease the drag forces. Uh, these are all, of course, linked together by this equation. The problem is that since we are human beings, we can only raise the power so much. And that's why we also need to look at reducing the opposing forces. Now, in terms of power meters, why do we measure power? Because power is the only objective uh, way uh, to quantify a rider's performance. The reason being, yes, we can all talk about average speed or average velocity. The thing is, 
uh, you still have two of these variables even if you have a set velocity. So we don't really know, when not measuring power, what are the opposing forces are and these can vary quite a lot. And in the further vi uh, video, in the next, in the series, I'm going to explain what all these forces are. But for now, uh, we can just uh, say that in order to get an accurate measurement or prediction of a drag force in a current situation, uh, this measurement is very limited and by the fact that it consists of, of roughly 20 different variables which uh, we can only measure by a, with a certain accuracy and precision. So this uh, can skew our results quite a bit. Okay, so now we know this. How do we get the power that we produce on the bike? So on the bike we push down on the pedals and that creates a rotational motion of the cranks. A power converted to a rotational motion uh, is the following. It's torque times angular velocity, so omega. Uh, you can see the analogy here. Force, torque, uh, velocity versus angular velocity. Now what is torque? That's quite simple. Torque is a force times a distance. In this case is a force uh, that we apply on the pedal uh, times the lever, so the length of the crank arm. What's angular velocity? Now that uh, is a bit more complicated, but we know that angular velocity equates to 2 pi times n. And n is something we're familiar with. This is the cadence in revolutions per minute that we can relate to when cycling. Uh, but for this calculation, we of course uh, need to convert that into revolution, revolutions per second, sorry. So now, if we put these into our equation, we get that power equates to force times lever times 2 pi times the cadence. So, yeah, this is the theory of it. To get a feel for it and to see that you don't really need to be strong for cycling, let's just have an example. So let's say we're riding at 300 watts at 90 RPM. What is the force that we need to apply to the pedals? Assuming, of course, that this is a constant force. So, if you put everything on the other side, then we get the following. So, our force will be power divided by 2 pi times the cadence times our crank length. And we get that for this power at this uh, cadence, which is fairly normal and a fairly high power for most riders, you only need to apply 187 newtons. Now this might so sound like a lot, but then uh, when we compare it to, for example, lifting something, it's actually not too much. If you divide this by the gravitational acceleration, so that's g, then we get that this equates to roughly lifting 19 kilograms. So the force you're putting out through both of your legs at this kind of power is only equivalent to lifting 19 kilos. So yeah, that just says or shows that you don't really need to be very strong to go fast on the bike in terms of muscle force that is. Of course, it's uh, a lot more complex than that. Okay, so now we know what power is. Next time around, we're going to focus how to increase our velocity by increasing our power 
or decreasing our drag forces and we're going to explore what the drag forces are in detail. So I hope you like this new format and you found this educational. If you'd like to see more about actual bikes, uh, then don't forget to tune into the channel and subscribe. It's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.